Hello, I'd like to welcome you to this week's Turf Tips. And we're here at Ohio State. I'm Joe Rimmelspach in the Department of Plant Pathology. And uh, today we're going to talk about several things. I'd like to give you an overview of what turf diseases we're seeing both in home lawns and golf courses. I have a couple what I'm calling learning topics that we're encountering this last period and also kind of the outlook for the future. But before I do that, I want to invite you uh, in a week. We have our field days here on August 7th here at the facility. We have the Ohio Turfgrass Foundation, OTF's uh, research day. And that is going to be a little bit different format this year. And as you can see, we're on the plots here. You'll see different updates on research from uh, agronomics and diseases and insects and things of that nature. So we'd like to invite you to that on August 7th. And the following day, August 8th, is Ohio Lawn Care's Summer Diagnostic Seminar. And it's a little different format. You can check their site out if you'd be interested in attending that. So on updates this week, the first thing is I want to talk about high cut turf and uh, Brian will show you kind of an overview of a lawn from northern Ohio. We're getting a lot of questions and calls of, of actual diseases going on in high cut turf. Some of the key things would be we have a, a lot of brown patch wherever there's been excessive moisture in high temperatures it's really taken off. We're getting questions on patch diseases. They may be true patch diseases like summer patch or necrotic ring spot or they just may be some other environmental or cultural factor. Um, a lot of dollar spots still active out there. Of course, rust on a lot of ryegrass. And believe it or not, in Northeast Ohio, we're still getting a lot of uh, comments about lingering red thread. And I just want to mention that because if we have a, the cool down like they're predicting next week, you know, that could fire up again and continue to be kind of an ankle biter. On the golf side, a little different scenario. Um, of course, the big thing is excessive water. But as far as infectious diseases, we've had questions uh, like on a, a, a few cases with about gray leaf spot. And uh, this per, uh, mainly affects your uh, perennial ryegrass, and there's been a lot of ryegrass problems. But basically, um, we have not had any confirmations. I've contacted both our, our friends at Purdue and in Rutgers, and they have not confirmed any gray leaf spot yet. So it's a little bit early yet, but that's a good question to ask. We've had questions like on anthracnose. We had one innovative superintendent that knew what to look for, and so he somehow there had a connection with the local high school, got into their biology lab and had his samples there looking under their microscopes. He said, I can't find, I couldn't find any anthracnose or those little black spines of CT. And uh, he sent me a sample, and of course I couldn't find them either because there aren't any. And he had other problems and issues going on with declining uh, cool season grasses. Um, also, we've had a couple questions about bacterial issues on gra grasses, and again, we have not confirmed any bacterial problems, especially on bent grass this year. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is learning topics. Now, basically, there's two things from this last week that were huge. One was excessive moisture in certain areas, and Brian will show a, a series of pictures of standing water in high cut turf, standing water on golf courses. Um, this excessive water has created tremendous problems when you have saturated soils and especially then with high temperatures. We've had a lot of turf collapse, a lot of damage, and a lot of setbacks. The other big area I want to mention that um, personally I, I learned from this week was that on diagnostics, go back to the basics. Now, I was visiting a golf course that had white or gray mycelium uh, in a step cut rough. I looked at it, I knew the temperatures were rather cool, it was extremely wet, but I thought, well, this most likely would be brown patch. I said, well, I'll check it out. I took the samples, and uh, Brian's got some pictures of the close-ups into this area, and um, sure enough, I look under the microscope, and it's all pythium, pythium blight, pythium ephatidomatum, just loaded with it. And so, sometimes we talk about, you know, temperature and water needs for a disease to break, uh, have an outbreak, but you know, even if one's not quite ideal, if the other is so out of whack, oftentimes it'll fuel that disease. So with excessive water that we had in the past, pythium could have been a major problem. As far as our outlook this week, um, I just want to mention, you know, we, we, it looks like we're going to be very fortunate with a cool down of both day and night temperatures. Um, if we can keep the water held back, that's going to be a tremendous benefit. And um, a lot of people are doing things like slicing these areas. Um, we have a photo of that, just a, a machine that slices the turf to get more air in the roots. If there's anything you can do to get more air in the root system to, uh, to mitigate the problems we've had would be great, very beneficial. 
Um, some people may want to even try to do some seeding if you have completely dead areas. Take this opportunity to do that. And, but remember, you're working with a very fragile system. And uh, even though we have some cool temperatures, it's going to take time to recover these areas. It's kind of a nice break in the summer to have this. So I, I'm going to be optimistic and say, you know, this is our gift. And we're going to have this and we'll get recovery or stabilization of turf and then get baby, hopefully get through the rest of the summer 2013 without too many problems. So have an enjoyable week and hopefully we'll see you at field day.